Welcome to the Prosperity Gap, where we discuss the financial gap that exists between where we are and where we should be. It's time to bridge that gap. Hey, Prosperity Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the Prosperity Gap. My name is Dave Hall. I am the Prosperity Guy. So excited to be here to help you bridge your gap between the life that you're currently living and the one that you should be. This is a crazy time. This is a crazy week. You're getting me coming from my home again, from my studio here. Unfortunately, it's not quite as designed quite as nice as the one that we have in the office. The acoustics aren't quite the same, but we're still here to bring you great information to help make sure that you're able to deal with your finances as we go through this crazy time. Well, for those of you that have not yet had a chance to subscribe to our show, please make sure that you do so. We want to make sure that every Friday we can bring you information into your inbox, into your mobile device, wherever it is that you're getting the subscription that it can come to you so you can listen to not only the content we have, but meet the amazing guests that we have on the show. Today's show is being brought to you by eTrends Tax and Accounting. If you've not yet had a chance to file your tax return, or if you are looking for help with the various stimulus packages that are out there, please reach out to them. You can go to etrendsgroup.com, get the contact information you need, and they are here to help you. Well, I'm excited about today's show. We're going to take a little different spin because we are in a little different times. We've actually brought a personal financial coach on the show with us today to talk about things we can do as we go through this crazy time that we're dealing with and the financial changes that you can make to better improve your life and to survive during these crazy times. So with that, Kendall Berry, welcome to the show. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to have you with us today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. So generally when we do this show, we usually take, you know, 10 or 15 minutes going through, or maybe, you know, 10 minutes going through talking about people's backstory. Today, I'd like to spend most of our time actually talking about things people can do to help themselves during this time. But maybe with that, if you could begin, just give us a quick background of, what got you to this point, how you got into financial coaching, and then we'll go into the tips that are really going to help our listeners. That sounds perfect, Dave. Well, the background to my financial journey is a few years ago, I was a young uh, married couple. My husband and I realized that we had quite a bit of debt. We had $53,000 worth of car debt, student loans, and credit cards. And we realized that even though we had really good income, we had nothing to show for it because we were going out, we were spending lots of our money and we just weren't making very wise decisions. Um, Around that time, I realized that I was really unhappy at my job and there was no possible way for me to stay home someday with our children. So we decided that we really needed to do something to figure out our financial situation. So we worked on changing our habits. We got on a budget, got on a plan to pay off our debt and paid off $53,000 worth of debt. And then we saved our six months emergency fund. And at that point, I was able to leave my job, which was an incredible gift. But I realized after a few months of being home that I really wanted to do something with my time. And the thing that really brought me joy was helping other people have the same financial freedom that we were enjoying. So that's when I decided to take a course to become a financial coach and start my own business, helping other people um, learn to manage their, their money more wisely and change their spending habits. And so I've been really enjoying that. I've been doing it for about a year and a half and Uh, Last year was an awesome year. My clients paid off a little over $318,000 worth of debt. And so I was just thrilled to be part of their their financial journeys. Well, that's great, Kendall. I appreciate you sharing that story because it's very important that our listeners understand not only do we have a a book-educated financial planner, but we've also got a life educated. We've got someone that's practicing what they preach that's able to apply the principles that we're going to talk about today. We find ourselves in a very unique time. We find ourselves in a situation where unemployment's skyrocketing. Many people are having to be at home. Things are changing in their abilities to not only make money, but the way they spend money. Let's start there, maybe, Kendall, talking about some basic things people can do during this time to help them weather the financial storm that we're facing here. Yeah, um, so the first thing I want to say is that I really want people to give themselves grace. 
Um, we can talk a lot about the shoulds and, and what we should be doing during this time, but I think we need to first acknowledge that this is something that none of us have been through before and that it's very stressful, um, very concerning time. So everyone needs to just be gentle with themselves. There's no one way to be feeling about this. There's no one right way to be handling this uh, emotionally. And so some people are going to be more on the ends of like high achieving with their anxiety and wanting to do a lot of things. And other people are going to be needing to just expend most of their energy just to continue surviving. Um, so that would be my first little bit of advice. But as far as what we can be doing right now during this time, uh, because we're in a storm, uh, I have eight things that we can be doing. So the first is, of course, to remain calm. Um, it can be really easy when we're watching the news or seeing the stock market go up and down that we want to panic and make some rash decisions. And so my biggest piece of advice there is just to ride things out. <laughs> Don't make any rash decisions when it comes to your, your retirement or your, your investments. So, so as you talk about staying calm here, I know that's one of the issues inside of our home that we're facing a little bit. My wife suffered from depression for a number of years, and this has become somewhat overwhelming to her. And I know for her, she's actually had to turn off the news. You know, basically, whatever information she's getting is coming through me in a dumbed down not necessarily even dumbed down, but a filtered approach to where I know she can handle what I'm going to share with her. And it just doesn't put her in a panic. Are you seeing this with other people and that we do have to be very careful spending our day watching the news? Yes. And, and I find this in, even for myself uh, that I, when I feel more anxious and stressed and when I hear negative things over and over and over again, it can paralyze me or cause me to panic. And so, you know, we all know what's going on right now. Yes, things are changing every day, but the basics of stay at home, wash your hands, et cetera, those things aren't changing. So I I would agree with you that turning off the news, especially if it's a trigger for you for anxiety, depression, and, and stress um, is a good good plan. Um, and then, you know, relying on each other to to get that news that we we need. Kendall, what's number two? So what's number two on your list? So reducing expenses. Now, thankfully, during this uh, stay-at-home order that we're under, at least here in Pennsylvania, we're not going out to do a whole lot of things. But that doesn't mean that expenses aren't going to creep in. I, I ask people to think about their spending triggers right now. So often we can be triggered to spend when we are frustrated, stressed, bored. And so we need to be thinking about doing things like taking the shopping apps off our phone and um, really going back to our budget to see what is necessary during this time. For so many people who are facing job loss, um, start cutting back your expenses to just the basics now in anticipation for when you're really going to have to be living that. I know I've seen it big time in our family. Amazon used to show up every day to my house and they haven't been here for a week. So it, it's got to have helped our budget. It's got to have helped us save money. But it really, as you say, is so important that people start cutting back and realizing too where their money's going. Now, unfortunately, Prosperity Nation, some of your largest expenses are going to be your home and your car, things that you're probably not going to be able to get rid of. But if you can cut these other costs and understand what they are, it can really help you when you have uncertainty about the amount of income that you've got coming in. Yeah, it's the, it's the four walls approach. So the four walls are housing, transportation, food, and utilities. And those are the main things that you need to be focusing on during this time. And everything else is kind of, it's not the absolute necessity right now. So, you know, make sure your four walls are covered and then make a list of the next important things that you need to cover with your income, um, but cut back as much as possible. Absolutely. So what's number three? Number three is increase your emergency fund. Now we're in the middle of an emergency, so you may already be tapping into your emergency fund, but we've got tax returns coming back. We've got a potential stimulus check that could be coming in. And so every extra dollar that you can eke out of your, uh, your budget by cutting back your expenses or by using any extra income that's coming in should be going to your emergency fund. We don't know yet how long this is going to last. 
And the more you have in savings, the more secure you're going to be. Hey, I'd rather have more in savings now and then nine months from now be able to put some of that towards extra house payments or something else, but better to have it on hand. This is one of my top recommendations to people. And as a CPA, obviously, I'm a firsthand person to see what happens to the money. You know, typically we get these large tax refunds or individuals do, especially if they're getting earned income credits and other things. And they go out and immediately start buying assets buy new furniture, buy big screen TV, spend it on things that are not providing long-term value necessarily. And I agree with you 100%, Kendall, is if you're getting money that you don't need, you need to put it aside for the future. Because if you think this is the only pandemic we're going to experience in our lifetimes, if you think that it can't get worse, well, I hate this isn't about depression and trying to get you discouraged, but we have many things ahead. And if we're prepared, we don't have to worry. We don't have to have fear because we put stuff away. So if you are able to put these extra funds in some type of an account, 100% agree with Kindle. Let's get them in there and have them for a future rainy day that may be much worse than what we're facing now. Absolutely. (laughs) Though it's hard to picture anything much worse. (laughs) Yeah, it definitely is. And especially for those that are going through the hardest part of it that have lost their jobs, that have no income, business owners. And we have thousands of business owners that we work with and we're seeing many of them have everything they've worked their whole lives for taken away from them in an instant. Now, there are a number of programs for the business owners that they can get access to. I mean, for some of my clients, I've got one of my clients that's going to get almost a million dollars in aid to help his business. Well, it's aid that's very desperately needed, aid that he needs to be able to apply to keep his employees working. But there are programs. And if you are a business owner listening to this, make sure you understand what those programs are, because there may be money available to you that you're not aware of. That's good advice, Dave. So what about number four? The number four is stock up on essentials. Now, I know there's all sorts of jokes out there about stocking up on toilet paper, but I have to say, I think um, I think a little bit of our emotional peace and security during this time is knowing that we have enough. And so use some, put aside some money in your budget to go and stock up on some extra things that you know you're going to need because we don't know what could happen if we end up getting sick and we're not able to get out to the store um, or if we lose our jobs. It's always a great idea to stock up on food, water, and medicine to have just in case you need it. So I would definitely recommend using some of the money in your budget to stock up on some things you might need. And there's a lot of calculators out there where you can calculate how much you need. I know for us, we already had a bunch of toilet paper. Our family's been putting stuff aside for a long time. It's been something our church has taught us for years and years since I was a little kid. So we've had these stockpiles of stuff. But it was interesting on toilet paper, my daughter did a calculation. And even with what we had, we had a three-month supply. There was really not a need for us to go get more. So why should we go add to the problem that's existing out there? And you can do calculations on that, your food, really look and see the amount of food that you need to live isn't necessarily as much as you might think it is. But if you get down and start eating some of the stuff in the cupboards that maybe you haven't for a long period of time, our family's actually done that recently because we're in the process of moving here within the next few months. So we said, hey, let's just start eating down a lot of our food. Well, we went almost a month without even buying anything because we had so much of it stocked up in the cupboards. And Many times you just don't realize what's there. And if you'll do the math in the background, you'll be able to figure it out. Absolutely. So number five, let's go to number five. Number five is keep cash on hand. So we're so much of a a techie society. I don't typically carry cash with me. I don't typically have cash on me, Um, but we don't know how things will play out. I'm not into like injecting fear into any sort of situation, but I do think that having cash on hand is always a good idea. So we have a safe, a little lockbox, and we've got some cash in there. So if something happened and we couldn't get to the bank or our debit card wasn't working, we could still use cash to pay for things. Such great advice. We don't realize how quickly things can change. I saw it in Puerto Rico because we were in a situation a couple of years ago when the hurricane happened that we could not get access to these electronic forms of money. And it was very important for us to have cash. And many of the places, even if we could, many of the places would not accept the electronic forms of payment. So you had to pay in cash. And during that period of time, we went through thousands of dollars because everything we had to buy for almost a two-month period of time, two to almost three months, 
was all cash. So you, wow. very important that you have that. Now, we don't expect that during this pandemic. We don't expect the systems to go down to that level, but it is such wise advice because it can happen and we've experienced it in our own lives. Mm, absolutely. Kindle number six. Number six is gather your important documents and have them ready. So it's like always a great idea to have kind of a fireproof box that has all of your important papers, your passports, all of that. But right now I would even say go in, um, have a list of all your passwords, your 401k information, your banking information, all of that in a place where you can find it easily if needed. Um, your wills, know where they are. So keep that important information nearby. And something that you don't realize how important it is either until you go through one of these situations. Yeah, and it's unique for me because I've already lived through something very similar in the sense of completely destroying the economy of Puerto Rico, completely making it where we couldn't get these things. And it is important that you have those documents available. The other thing you've got to realize, we're not just dealing with a pandemic now. We're dealing with tornadoes. We're dealing with earthquakes. There are supposedly this year is going to be one of the highest possible years for having a hurricane especially out in the Atlantic Ocean. They expect that there's like a 95% chance that at least one of them will hit the U.S. mainland. So we've got all of these things that are going on with Mother Nature that can affect us that we just need to prepare ourselves for. Absolutely. Number seven, go ahead. Number seven is, you know your company's policies on sick days, vacation time, unpaid leave and working from home. You've probably had these conversations already by this point, um, but knowing how much you have for sick leave, how, how long you're going to be paid for vacation time, and just know what your company's policies are on all of this. Um, and I, I kind of said one of the other points as well, which was know your health insurance coverage, which is important right now. What are the co-pays? Uh, what does your insurance coverage? And I think it's important that you understand what your rights are, too. I know I've had a few people call me that are saying my employer is doing this to me and like cutting their hours substantially. It's like, look, I, I'm only working maybe two days a week where I was working five days before. What are the rights that I have so I can actually fill that gap? I'm in a situation I've got to fill that gap. I can't afford to live off of just two days a week. So I agree. In addition to knowing your company policy and talking to your HR department, making sure that you understand what they're doing understanding too what your rights are, that if they're making adjustments to your compensation, if they're making adjustments to your workload, that you understand what benefits are going to be available to you through state and federal governments to help you weather this storm and get through it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, Kendall, let's go to number eight, the last and final one. Great. So my last uh, piece of advice is to create an emergency action plan with your family so that everybody knows what the plan is if, um, if something becomes a, a bit more of an emergency for your family. And that includes being able to communicate with everybody, sitting down and talking about the situation that we're in, of course, um, being aware of the different ages of the people in your family and, and the kind of information that they can process right now, but letting everybody know, hey, this is our plan if an emergency happens, but also, we might be in this situation for a while and we're going to be cutting back on expenses and the things that we're doing and just make sure that everybody's on the same page so that um, you can get through this together. Such great advice. Something that's not often talked about in the financial world, but it's getting yourself prepared, having a plan. I mean, we talk a lot about financial planning, but you need to make sure you have life plans. And right now, Prosperity Nation is such a great time to do it because for many of you, you have tons of free time. Now you are filling it up with Netflix and watching the Tiger King with the rest of the world maybe, but uh, you, know, you want that uh, drama in your life, maybe you're watching the news, but now is a great time to do it. I know many of my guy friends ask them what they're doing in their spare time. They're like, I'm doing honeydew jobs that I was supposed to have done years ago that I've just not made time for. Now I have the time and I'm getting them done and to establish those plans, spend the time with the wife and kids or the husband and kids or whatever your family situation is, spend time together. What a great opportunity to make sure you're all on the same page, you're prepared, and that you're getting feedback from your family on things that could be done different to help you weather through this. It's not about one person having all the ideas and giving the direction. It's about people working together to find solutions to the problem. I totally agree. <laughs> 
So Kendall, for those of our listeners that want to get a hold of you and to follow what you're doing, to maybe look into getting some individual coaching, I know you do a lot of coaching online. How can they do that? How's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah. So if you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Barry's on a budget. Um, You can also look me up on uh, my website, which is www.berrypersonalfinance.com. And that's B-E-R-R-Y, correct? Yes, like the fruit. (laughs) Okay, just want to make sure for those listeners that you get it correct. I know that there's many ways sometimes that people will spell these things, but yeah, take the opportunity to follow her. You've got some great posts, great information. And again, if you need additional coaching, a great opportunity for you to set with someone where they can help direct you through this time. One of the last things that I would like to comment on is just making sure that you have a budget together and you understand your finances. We talk about making sure we understand our expenses, but you want to be planning out how long can I last? If I'm out of work, how long can I last before I have a real problem? It's very important that you know this because it can help you plan. Yes, there's government stimulus packages. Yes, there's checks that are going to come to most of America, but you need to understand how you're going to get to the points until they come or unemployment comes, or these other things, how you're going to get to that point. And the better, the more knowledge you have, the better prepared you're going to be. Absolutely. Well, Kendall, thank you so much for being on our show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Dave. Prosperity Nation, you have been listening to the Prosperity Gap. My name's Dave Paul. If you've not yet had a chance to subscribe to our show, please do so bringing you great information every Friday to help you with your finances. If you've not yet had a chance to file your tax returns, or if you need help better understanding the stimulus packages that are out there and how you and your business might benefit, go to eTrendsGroup.com where they're happy to help make sure that you get the advice that you need. So Prosperity Nation, as we go through all this time together, let's work together to make sure that we can provide the lifestyle that we should be living rather than the one that we currently are. See you next week.